I'm in the media industry, so it's not going to be easy to get me to bash the media or go after journalists or commentators or whatever it may be, right? It's not smart. You're not going to see Leonardo DiCaprio say that Martin Scorsese is a terrible director. You're just not going to see that. It's seen as unprofessional. It's not smart. But sometimes there's a line that's crossed and I feel like that line has been crossed. And throughout the last five, six days, I felt almost a moral obligation to try to set the record straight on this viral and widespread lie that Novak Djokovic lectured Simone Biles on how to deal with pressure or that he scolded her or even referred to her. It didn't happen. And to see reputable, large platform journalists peddle the idea that it did and generate columns around the idea that it did has been extraordinarily frustrating and very, very hard to swallow. Uh, and I have done all I can, at least on Twitter, to try to combat this. And I just feel like it's... It's what I had to do. So I want to do the same here and first just go through the events and just try to dissect how this happened. And I want to warn you right now that there's not going to be a really happy ending to this video. I don't have the answer for how this can be avoided in the future. It's terrible what happened. And I don't, again, I just don't know what can be done for this to never happen again. But let's just move forward. And I want to start by reading word for word what the question was that Novak Djokovic was asked in the press conference in question. The question was, and I quote, Novak, you would have heard about Simone Biles yesterday talking about mental health and the pressure of performing. You're in this position going for the golden slam, you know. There's no more pressure on a tennis player than you currently. Can you speak a little bit about it? So first of all, Novak maybe would not have heard about Simone Biles. Simone Biles had pulled out of the team competition in gymnastics about 24 hours before this question was asked. And Novak is kind of busy, isn't he? So maybe he had heard about it, but you know, maybe he hadn't. Just going to throw that out there. But what you see in this question is a classic reporter crutch. And I've been in hundreds of press conferences and I've seen this because it's just what journalists tend to do. And it's kind of silly, but it's justifying the reason for asking the question. And in this case, it's, no, Beth, you would have heard about Simone Biles. Now let me ask my question. And it's a classic format that reporters use when they're asking questions all the time. And it, I could I could do it for anything. Uh, it could be, hey, Jim, I know it's really hot outside and everything, and uh, we're getting into the summer months. How do you feel about iced coffee? How do you feel about it? Well, the question is, how do you feel about iced coffee? The first part of the question was actually just justifying the reason for asking the question, that's what this was. Simone Biles was not the question. Simone Biles was simply a justification for asking the question of, hey, Novak, you're going for the Golden Slam. Can you speak about dealing with this pressure? And what was to follow is kind of a canned response that Novak Djokovic often goes to when he's asked about pressure. And if you've read countless transcripts from Djokovic, you know that this is a very common thing for him to say, something he's said in the past. And it is, to quote Billie Jean King, pressure is a privilege. Novak went on to say, without pressure, there is no professional sport. If you are aiming to be at the top of the game, you better start learning how to deal with pressure and how to cope with those moments on the court, but also off the court. All the expectations. Hmm, court. Hmm, that doesn't sound like he's talking about Simone Biles, but I digress. Novak Djokovic was quoting Billie Jean King, and the first outlet that I saw pick up that quote was Reuters, the newswiring uh, website slash newswire. 
And they actually did it responsibly. They used the quote responsibly and they made sure to specify that Novak was talking about dealing with the pressure of going for the Golden Slam. We went wrong after that because a couple of outlets incorrectly used the quote and said that he was referring to Simone Biles. The first to explicitly get this wrong was Le Equipe. They retracted the story and later apologized, but undoubtedly, for some, it was too late. And some had already seen the story, some had already seen the headline, and ran with it. That is the problem, is that sometimes, especially on social media, but in journalism as a whole, it becomes piggybacking and aggregation. And not only is Le Equipe guilty for beginning this whole mess, but also someone like Jose Morgado, who tweeted out the quote, the pressure is a privilege quote, with zero context, none whatsoever. And in the current in the current moment, you know how that quote is going to be taken. You know, you know how it's going to be taken. In the heat of the Simone Biles controversy, you don't just tweet out a pressure, uh, a quote about pressure with zero qu- context. You know, you know how people are going to take that if you don't provide the context. The context is Djokovic was talking about the pressure that he was having to deal with going for the Golden Slam. That's the context. If you tweet it out without the context, people are going to make that conclusion that he was talking about Simone Biles. Why did Jose do that? Jose did that because he was going to get more retweets, more likes on his tweet if he didn't provide the context. Because without the context, ooh, was Novak talking about Simone there? So you get more engagement. And if Jose wants to come on the show um, to refute that or to explain himself or to talk about this, the invitation is open. Um, I'm I'm happy to have this conversation with him face to face because again, you know, I'm not going to bash someone and disappear. But I thought that was really bad by Jose. I thought it was really really bad. And the worst part about it is Jose is part of tennis media, and when when the story got out of hand, is not when it was being picked up by people like Jose and Leaquipe. The story got out of hand when it got picked up by the mainstream media and people who do not normally cover tennis because when they don't regularly cover tennis, they are reaching eyes and ears who really don't know much of anything about Novak Djokovic. They are extremely impressionable and they are unlikely to see and hear all of the people like like me who were loudly warning against the narrative that was being built and created that Novak Djokovic was commenting on the Simone Biles situation. And the reason why this was so unfair is because if you don't know about what happened with Biles, Simone Biles withdrew from the... She's a Team USA gymnast, and she withdrew from the team competition uh, because she was mentally unfit to continue. She had something that gymnasts refer to as the twisties and she feared for her mental and her physical health and therefore withdrew. And that opened up this culture war and long story short, it became a polarizing issue where whatever you said about Simone Biles, you were going to upset some people. And for people to put Novak Djokovic in a box, which he did not intend to go into, is going to was going to really upset some people and to formulate ideas about Novak Djokovic that were completely bogus, unjustified, and based on a fabrication and at very best, poor, poor journalism. Journalism at its worst that 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 makes assumptions and puts words and twists them into context that they were not intended to be twisted into. So what ended up happening is the mainstream media picked this up at such a fantastic rate 
that PolitiFact had to produce a fact-checking article that confirmed that it is mostly false that Djokovic was not directly referring to Simone Biles when he said pressure is a privilege. Um, but a lot of journalists actually did so by accident uh, because, again, it becomes this piggyback effect where people see, journalists see outlets and colleagues who they trust saying a certain thing and they take them at their word. So people like Justin Barragona tweeted the falsity that Djokovic was talking about Biles and later deleted their tweets because they realized and they heard the mob, the people, the tennis insiders, the people who know better, who told him, no, this is not actually the case and this is wrong. I was in people's mentions like Sabrina Siddiqui, who is a Wall Street Journal White House correspondent. This is how out of hand this got. And Sabrina deleted her tweet. And again, I just emphasize this is a White House correspondent for the Wall Street Journal. These are trusted journalists speaking to non-tennis fans who again are going to formulate their opinions on Novak Djokovic just based on one or two things that they hear because previously they have very little idea of who Novak is. And that's why it is so damaging for something like this to happen. Well, Justin and Sabrina, they're actually the good ones. Look, they could have done more to independently verify the things that they were saying, but they were completely open to the fact that, oh, crap, I didn't realize that I'm using this out of context, but now that I do, I'm going to at least delete my tweet and try to make it right. Um, some even apologized, many apologized. Then, of course, there are articles still out there from journalists who I can really find very, very little excuse for. Anna Killian of the San Francisco Chronicle wrote a think piece after Novak Djokovic lost his temper on the court. She talked about how it's very hypocritical that he could do something like that after criticizing Simone Biles. Now, my reply to Anne's tweet got more likes than her tweet. I said, did you read the question that was asked to Djokovic? The question was not about Biles, and more importantly, neither was the answer. But Anne still hasn't said anything. The article is still up. She hasn't even addressed the feedback that she's gotten. And if you've been on tennis Twitter, probably if you've been on Facebook and Facebook has actually flagged one of the viral posts about this as false information. So kudos to Facebook doing everything they can. Um, if you've been on tennis Twitter, you, you'll know that it's not just Djokovic fans standing up for Novak. It's Federer fans. It's Nadal fans. It's everyone because the tennis community has seen what the mainstream non-tennis Media has done with this story and it has bothered everyone. So then I know that people have taken the initiative to look a little bit further into who Ann Killian is and the, the results are clear. She doesn't like Djokovic. She can't stand Djokovic. And I don't know how else to say it, but if you are a sports journalist... If you are going to unabashedly show your disdain for an athlete, never cover that athlete, never write about that athlete, never talk about that athlete. Because if you do, you are, you are completely compromised and you have no integrity. You have no integrity if you are that openly against an athlete and then you were going to cover them? You're going to write about them? Anne might say, look, it's an opinion piece. Uh, yeah, I'm just, 
I'm out on this. I'm out on this. I have nothing good to say about this. Uh, then there is also Charlotte Clymer, who is a very popular sub-stacker who has over 300,000 followers on Twitter, who has had a mob of people coming after her, a mob of people telling her that she has been peddling a false narrative and she's just unwilling to listen. So, um, the one thing I didn't show you is the journalist who actually asked the question, Sudipo Ganguly, who uh, has confirmed that he was not asking about Simone Biles. And people just couldn't help themselves, I suppose. Uh, people were too eager for this to, to strike when the iron was hot and to jump on this sensationalist uh, narrative that undoubtedly was going to get a great number, a great amount of attention, was going to rile people up, was going to be a story that people were going to gravitate towards both capitalizing on a controversial hot-button topic, which was Simone Biles, to combine it with a superstar athlete who is also somewhat polarizing in Novak Djokovic, and to just put these two against each other was obviously a story that was going to was going to generate a lot of attention, but it just it was a story that wasn't there at all. And to see so many, so many just not have the self-control or the integrity or just the decency or the journalistic chops to check themselves and avoid making this story a thing was incredibly disheartening and incredibly difficult to watch. And I cannot denounce it enough. And I'll end by saying, I'm sure this is going to spark a lot of blanket anti-media sentiment. And I, I understand and I don't blame that for happening. Uh, just always remember how, how broad the term media is. It literally means everything. Media means, media means pretty much everything. So, uh, I just... I urge you to be specific specific with your critiques as I was here. There is a reason I didn't bash the media. There is a reason that I named names that I said this is what I've had a problem with. This is how, you know, this is who started it. This is who ran with it. This is who deleted it. This is who apologized. Um, and again, most of tennis media has been good. Most of tennis media has done everything they have can or at least have done something to try to quell this viral media lie. And when I say everyone, I mean people from Ben Rothenberg, people from John Wertheim to Miney Carroll. Uh, you know, these people, the, the biggest people in tennis media have all seen the wrongdoing here and have all pretty much come to, to Novak's defense. But this has been a disaster. This has been a media disaster. It has been very, very disappointing. I have no good conclusion here. I have no ideas of how to avoid this in the future. And that might be the saddest thing of it all. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.